Hello and welcome to the Worn and Wound podcast. My name is Blake Bettner. Today we are back in studio with Zach Weiss. Zach Weiss, hello, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hello. <laughs> How do we do this? Again? Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, we're also joined by Zach Kazan. Zach Kazan, how are you? Hey guys, I'm doing well. How are you? We're real well. Uh, surviving um, some pretty intense heat over here. Another hot day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are also joined in studio uh, by our super producer Josh. Josh, how are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Just trying to stay cool. <laughs> Dude, speaking, of, that's a really cool hat you got on there. Uh, Oh, yeah. It's Olympics time, so I'm busting out all my vintage Olympics gear. It's like a 90s Olympics with all the flags. Oh, man, that's cool. I like that. Um, yeah, so it's 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 just us. We've had a lot of guests on in recent weeks, you may have noticed. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, some of those podcasts. And it's been a while since uh, just the three of us have really kind of been on talking about recent releases, mm-hmm. uh, some of the goings-on. Uh, so we thought we would get together and talk about some watches that have kind of stuck with us over the past few months um, and anything else that should, uh, should, should come to our mind. So uh, b- before we jump in, um, let's do... What are we wearing today? Zach Kazan, what do you got on your wrist? I'm wearing my uh, Grand Seiko SBGH 271 today. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, Zach Weiss, what do you have on your wrist there? I found my uh, most recent acquisition, if you will, the uh, Louis Arard X. X? 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 Louis Arard X Alon Silberstein Regulator uh, Version 2. This is the second time they've made one. Um, yeah, really, uh, really enjoying it. It's been, um, it was kind of an oddball watch, felt some pressure to buy it in a short amount of time because it was going to sell out and just <laughs> yeah. pulled the trigger. And it did sell out. It did sell out. It sold out like within a day. Are you happy you bought it? I am. I okay. am. Initially, I was in the waiting period between ordering it and receiving it. I was less happy yes. that I had gone through with it. That's, that's a that, stressful time. It is. You, uh, yeah. All sorts of yeah. emotions. Well, and what and was that window? It's 12, like 15 weeks. months? Oh, oh no, a couple no. weeks. A couple okay. weeks. Okay. A couple weeks. <laughs> All right, well. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've said it before, immediate satisfaction is what I'm, I'm here for. All right, um, but now that you have it, that weight didn't feel so bad, right? No, I guess in retrospect. You know what made it worse was that somebody I follow on Instagram, uh, a friend um, who had bought it, got his like two weeks before me. Oh, so I was just okay. like, come on, where is it? Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know how that goes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Josh, what do you got on your wrist over there? Uh, well, I have... Uh... Oh, you guys saw it, I don't know, two weeks ago or so. I have a pink MK1 that I initially bought for my wife. She didn't like it. That's what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was just like, but I've had an MK1 before and I really enjoyed it. So I was just like, you know what? I think I could do that. And then I got a, I got a green strap courtesy of some friends I know at the, at the wind-up shop. There so, you go, yeah. Yeah, so um, nice. yeah, it set it off pretty nicely. Yeah, yeah it looks good from here. Yeah, it works with that hat too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have to find a picture of that hat to put in the show notes or something. <laughs> Maybe it's on his Instagram. Blake's very excited about that. Yeah, I do. I like this hat. Yeah. Um, I'm wearing a Seiko uh, 7002. Old school, on an 80 strap. Uh, you know, sometimes you open up the old watch box and uh, and uh, the one that like hasn't been worn in a long time just is kind of shouting your name. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I got to give this one. Every month I feel like I come around and, and wear this one for a couple of days. And I always enjoy it when I do. You yeah, know? you're like, oh, why should wear this watch more often? It's got some uh, good summer vibes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, so yeah, there's there's been a lot of releases since the last time we were here talking about this. Uh, we're we're not going to talk about every every single thing, but uh, there are a few interesting watches that I think we will spend some time on. Uh, first and foremost, and the most interesting watch, of course, came from Tag Heuer uh, just recently. <laughs> <laughs> this was a connected watch uh, in collaboration with Nintendo. Uh, so this featured um, uh, Mario on the watch. Well, he's kind of like the skin built into the operating system and uh, little animations that you could unlock and things like that. Uh, so we we uh, we put this up just because I was kind of I thought it was entertaining and um, who doesn't like Mario? Who doesn't like Mario? Of course. I mean, so the, I mean, there are some people up here. Some people up here. Yeah, yeah. But they do they not feelings. like Mario? I mean, we all. I mean, come on, we're kids, children of the '80s. Yeah. Played in the NES one. And, and everyone ran an article on this, and they all had the same. Yeah. Oh, I grew up in this time, and I remember this level and, and, and that. We were blowing and, dust out of the cartridge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, all the articles had had a similar um, anecdote about it. So yeah. I think I, um, 
Um, you had some level warp jokes in there. Some but... level warp. Well, I think I just did like a tongue in cheek insert quip about oh, old okay. memories of game here. <laughs> um, so it was a joke about making the joke. A yeah. joke about me. Yeah, it yeah. was a little meta, uh, <laughs> there. So, um, but I do. But I did talk about. It. I play Mario Maker two with with my yeah. son who just turned nine yesterday. Actually, um, so uh, so happy I happy birthday Liam. We happy birthday that. Liam. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, happy birthday. <laughs> so we get uh so I have uh like today, you know, pretty cool feelings about Mario. I have never once thought though but I would really like this incorporated with with a watch. Um I guess that's not something that really crosses my mind about these things. Uh but Tag Horror went there, they did it. This was a limited edition. I think they're making two thousand yeah, of I them. Think that's what it said, two thousand ish. Yeah. And uh and they are sold out, so um so people like them and then they I know a few people, contemporaries of ours, Ariel Adams mm-hmm. really liked it, and and that's great. And I, we took some flack on um, on Instagram for, uh, you know, for not taking a harsh enough stance against Tag Heuer for doing this, um, which uh, which I think I replied to to one of you, uh, and totally respectfully, of course. And we, we always appreciate uh, you um, sharing your thoughts with us about this. So, so I think we would talk a little mm-hmm, bit about mm-hmm. this watch and maybe the expectation of what our job is here at One and Wound, um, and that we could address it a little bit. Before we do that, do you, do you guys have anything that you want to say about this watch? So I, I'm just I'm just thinking about a little art direction, perhaps for this post, and I think. I've seen I've seen these get made in the office before, but can you take the Drake meme and put like him like looking upset about the Mario watch, but then him looking excited about a Mickey watch? Mm, the Mickey, okay. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right. There there is precedent <laughs> here, right? There there yeah. are cartoon watches that some are very yeah. popular. Uh, Zach, I think you pointed out the Snoopy Omega watches that that uh, trade for quite a bit over retail <laughs> these yeah, days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, I, I know that's a very different thing than the kind of digital connected watch. Um, but Zach, what, what was your reaction to this watch? Um, so this is, uh, I think, probably all three of us agree, like this watch is like not to our like particular taste. Uh, it's certainly not something that I would want to like purchase and, and wear. Um, but I'm kind of... Um, I guess a little befuddled by the, uh, the the folks who say that they just don't understand it because there yeah. is obviously like history of um, you know character watches and also um, people love video games like especially retro video games like we're recording this episode in a week where um, a sealed copy of Super Mario sixty four sold for a million and a half dollars at auction so like there is clearly a market for um, you know, for, for like video game related stuff. And I think that, um, you know, tech lawyer probably wanted to cash in on that a little bit. Um, it, it worked. The, the watch is no longer available on their website. I don't know if there are any that are still available through authorized dealers, but I imagine this is a watch targeted towards, uh, towards like video game collector types and video mm-hmm. game enthusiasts and not, uh, the type of watch enthusiasts that, you know, um, Obviously, like we are, and, and tend to uh, to to read Worn and Wound and other other watch sites. This is um, this is not really a product for them, and I think that's uh, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'd imagine they're considering the limited number that more people bought these on spec than anything else. You yeah. know, and like there are video game collectors less than watch collectors. I agree, and yeah, they bought it because it was part of like the world of Mario memorabilia and. I mean, probably one of the more limited things in that world, frankly, that's come out yeah, at some sure. time. Um, Do you think that the man or woman who spent a million and a half dollars on that cartridge bought one of these? I hope so. I hope they read one. If and that was you <laughs> and you're listening, <laughs> let us know if you bought one. Yeah, and then they went on to Instagram and let like a trolley comment just to like make sure nobody thought it was them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so look, I, and I can certainly appreciate the. You know that some people were questioning Tag Heuer's strategy here, um, uh, that the world, or not understanding it. And, and look, we don't run this brand, yeah. and uh, they they sold out of all of them, so they clearly knew what they were doing to some extent. Um, and you know, it's far yeah. be it from us to to critique their. And it's like the, you know we could all daydream about what are some sort of fantasy version. Like you know, we I think we said it, and then I've seen the comment millions of times. It's just like we wish there was a Mario Kart. Career or something, right? So, but like, why? But in the end, why would you have actually bought that? Would you have actually spent seventy eight hundred dollars on that rather than two thousand dollars on this other thing? Like, I wouldn't have. And in yeah. the end of the day, it wasn't for like the niche group of like vintage Hoyer nerds slash Mario 
fanboys who coincide on Instagram, you know? It's like... But those people do exist. And, and this is, you know, my point was like, look, I'm, you know, I'm not here to make subjective, like, it's, it's not for me, sure, but I'm not going to rag on it and, and just because I don't particularly care for, for this direction. Like, I have nothing against it and I have nothing against people who do find it. I mean, clearly people do or did and, and they were bought. Um, yeah. You know, I'm under no obligation or any of you to patronize their business <laughs> if you don't like the strategy they're taking, um, which, is, which is certainly well within your rights. And, and you know, I would sympathize with you there. Um, the other, the other part of it was, uh, you know, people were, were upset that we weren't more critical on this. I, I have a hard time being overly critical of something that I have no experience handling. I've never handled a connected watch. Um, I'm sure there are things that I would take issue with it if, if I did, but I haven't, I might really be surprised at how much I like it or how comfortable it is or, or whatever. I just feel like it's not, uh, you know, it's not fair of me to, take a critical stance on something that I have no experience with. And um, then that's kind of, mm. that, that does not just apply to this. That's, that's a lot of watches that we write about that I, on paper might, no, oh, that's really not for me. But I've also been really surprised by a lot of watches that I did like, that I didn't think I was going to like, or didn't like that I thought I was going to like. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's not for me to be overly critical of something that I have not but handled. I also think people need to understand that like critical, constructive criticism, which is what, we do i would i would like to think when we write about watches isn't i don't like this right. i don't care if i don't if you don't like it or if i don't like it that's not that is not the point yep. you know like so yeah do do i personally like it no if i went on to write an article about why i don't like it because i personally don't like it that is actually of no value to anyone yeah you know and it's only i mean it, it might get some clicks and you know the yeah whatever like but where that's not really who we are yeah <laughs> um, and we're not out here to bring anybody Ten down. watches we wish mary was on instead of you know it's yeah like, that's you, not what you, we're you won't believe number four <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's just not who we are as as people that's not how we even when we're not being recorded, that's not how we talk about watches. No. Um, so, uh, but that said, like, I think we, when we have watches that we have issues with that we, after we've spent some time with them, we're not shy about being critical of them. And you can go read any one of our reviews and, um, you know, maybe some more than others, you'll find, uh, I think, fair assessments, in, mm-hmm. including criticisms of, of the watches that we handle. Um, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's maybe it's not our role to like whip brands into line if they get off track and if by our standards right but that's it's not really our job and um uh i don't know i guess do you guys have anything you want to add to this i mean i would totally agree with that uh, you know i wouldn't characterize our job as uh you know whipping brands in, into shape uh you know like i think tag Heuer is a um it's interesting that people take this you know, kind of line of criticism with Tag Heuer of, of all brands, because I think that they've done a really good job in the last year or so of kind of uh, kind of catering to all of their bases. They've released a lot of cool, like vintage inspired watches and modern watches. And this is like, obviously the Mario thing is very much a, a niche product. So, you know, what what are we really angry at, at, at Tag for? Like they seem to be kind of like dipping into everything and making every pocket of their customer base happy with something over the course of the of the last year, so um, I don't really think too much. You know, I uh, certainly there are some brands that I really really like, but ultimately it's about the watch and not the not the brand. And I don't really care as a watch enthusiast about like brand direction as much as like the individual watches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think the the anger here is pointed towards. Um, I don't know. I feel like the it, it being almost like too mainstream or something of a version or something yeah. like that, or not mainstream, like somewhere in between. It's like there's always a little bit of like this weird kind of hesitance towards Tag Heuer. And, you know, I understand that's like a big mall brand. It's not like an insider brand, really, though they might have insider watches. Um, but then this thing was a little bit expensive. So it's probably out of your price range anyway for kind of like an impulse purchase. So like had Apple or had G-Shock done this at five, six hundred dollars, I think we would be having a very different conversation and the reception would have been totally different as well. Certainly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and and I don't mean to call anybody out in the comments section. I would say the comments were were very respectful overall. Um, you know, and you know, not to, you know, I guess say all this and they don't have a chance to respond. I mean, we certainly welcome any comments that, that you want, even if they are critical um, of us, and especially if they're done in, in a respectful manner. And I'm happy to reply and jump in there, uh, which I did. 
so if if you have any other thoughts on this, I guess you can jump <laughs> into the comment section of this post. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and and let us know. Um, I mean, we we've all got our own biases and that kind of thing, and. Um, uh, I, don't, I guess that's a whole different story, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but speaking of, um, let's let's get into some other watches, some other releases that maybe are a little bit more up our alley. Uh, should we start with the with the watch that's on your wrist, Zach? All right, I guess this like this because that falls out. within that period, God, isn't it? It's been a while. That's crazy. Because this was this sure. was this is a this is a trio of watches, right? It was, yeah. So yeah, I'll just get into it. Um, the Louis Erard Exelon Silver Scene tr Trilogy this time. So they, in 2018, 2019, they released um, two regulators with Elon Silverstein. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with Louis Erard in general, which is, is, is probably many people because they're not like a brand that's really on like, you know, the top of mind for most people. They, they've been around for some time. They're a brand I happen to have been aware of because it's a brand my dad was a fan of and um, I had at a time owned a Louis Rard regulator, but like they made regulators. That was like their thing. They made all other sorts of watches, but they're one of the few brands that always had like a decent amount of regulators in their collection, which is pretty uncommon. Um, back then, I think they were built off, like the one I had back in the day was a module, I believe their own module, and it worked on a Pizu 7001. So it was a hand wound regulator. It was very, you know, very elegant. Now I don't think they use the 7001 anymore. They're more automatic. But anyway, the brand kind of, I'd say like waxed and waned in popularity. I don't think they were available in the U.S. for some time. Like they didn't have U.S. distribution. And then a few years ago, they started doing these collaborations, which is totally rocketed the brand into, you know, uh, relevance again. I, you know, congratulate them on coming up with a very cool and novel and a very like on the moment, in the moment strategy that's working really well. So um, they did some watches with Eric Giroud, which I believe, um, I don't know if this guy quite got the fanfare as others, but like they are there, they're in the collection. Then they did the first Salon Silbersteins, which sold out very quickly. And I was quite envious of people who got them because I have once again, like an affection for Alon Silberstein's work from having gone to like Kenjo and stuff in the nineties, walking around the city. Like I never owned one. They were never really like a grail watch, but I always looked at them and then I saw this come out and I was like, oh man, like now that I'm in, in the industry, now I'm working, you know, and I, I see these things, like, it's cool, you know? Anyway, and I, at the time, I wasn't in a place to buy one either just a couple of years ago. So those went, they went quickly. They sell for, like, double, I think, retail. Yeah. Um, and then they did one with Vianney Halter, which I think really took everyone by surprise. You know, that's a really high... Spencer. And <laughs> took Max Spencer by Brian. Yeah, go listen to that podcast. But, you know, it's a very high-end independent who's working now and made something that was relatively accessible. And those sold out in hours, I believe. Very cool-looking watch. They followed that up. Well, I'll just skip ahead. They followed that up with with this. And this time, they really went all in on, on the Salon Silberstein uh, collaboration, um, doing a trilogy of watches, but with entirely new cases. This is an entirely novel case for the brand. And I think is, you know... I don't know if it'll apply to other Alain Silberstein collaborations in the future, but it's, you know, I don't think it's something you're going to find on like mainline watches of theirs. So it's sort of a hard case to describe. It's a 40 millimeter cylinder that's sort of floating within brackets around it. So there's sort of like semi-skeletonized portions of the case. It's all titanium. Um, it's very unique looking case. It's like a funky tapered crown with like a red enamel fill on it. And they did three versions. So there was a, uh, a three hand with a day date, but instead of the day, they use um, like a series of emojis, which I guess is something Alon Silverstein did in his watches in the past. So, you know, you can sync it up in kind of a cure kind of a way if you want and make like Friday a happy face, or you could, you know, you can kind of play with it however you'd like there, or you could just change it for your mood in the day, basically, which I, it's a very fun thing. I think that one actually sold out first, which mm -hmm. surprised me because I thought that was like kind of the weirdest. Yeah. Um, then they did the regulator which sort of pulled from the previous model, has some different tweaks to it. And then there was a mono pusher chronograph, which also also exceptionally cool. I kind of vacillated on the two, but I have a bunch of chronographs. I don't have any other regulators. Mm. Um, and then it comes on, and this is kind of the funniest part, because this is not an inexpensive watch. This is like, I think all said and done was around $3,700, which is way more than I typically spend on a watch. It comes on a uh, an Apple strap. I mean, this is the Velcro nylon apple strap. It is the same material that is not typically what you expect to find on a watch this price, maybe as in addition to a bracelet or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it has titanium end links and a little titanium like tip at the end. Um, but it's it's essentially like a piece of fabric and it's the most comfortable strap I've ever worn and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it it like works, yeah. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, I mean, it's you know, these are very strange looking watches. They're not for everyone. I think you kind of have to appreciate Alon Silberstein or know a bit about him. You don't have to, but I feel like it helps if you know about him and know his work to like then see this. Because if you saw this, you'd be like, why is this so overly simplified? Why are the forms so almost, you know, I see the people use the term childish. And it's like, that is, you know, his aesthetic drawing from Bauhaus school and like of design. That's why it's primary colors. He's very like forward shapes and... um it's it's a style and um it's jarring and i don't I, I can't even quite explain why i like this watch so much but a part of what i like about it is are those really simple forms the uh hour subdial at the top when i look at it reminds me a bit of like a keith herring drawing like it looks like yeah. like exclamation marks around mm -hmm. like an excited person um and it's just it's like fun and energetic and whimsical which like i don't think i own another watch it's like whimsical yeah. you know yeah yeah it's, it's a really cool watch I've, I've got a few thoughts on this the case um well, i guess first of all if, if you're hearing us throw on the term regulator and you, you're not sure what that is oh, yeah, um, this is this is a watch <laughs> that breaks the uh the hours minutes and seconds into their own kind of dials and so the the minutes hand is still uh going around the track of the entire dial yeah. and the hour so gets the hour hand gets its own dial up at 12 o'clock and then the seconds hand gets its own dial down at uh at six o'clock yeah um, i guess so um but but i like this the the case has like a, a debitune quality to it almost mm -hmm. uh, the debitune has a similar kind of structure like that um except the they're kind of like spring loaded in the center. Yeah, so they those, like hinge, right? They like yeah. hinge, which is which is really cool. But it has that same look. And this is a, a much more uh like approachable size than mm -hmm. most Debitune, so I don't think it really needs that. Like How, it helps those become be more wearable, right? Interesting. Like, yeah. I mean, what's this the for uh the cylinder is 40. I haven't actually taken calibers to this, so I'm not sure if that's to the edge of these sort of parent parenthesis kind of arms yeah. because they go out a little bit beyond the central uh cylinder here but it, yeah. you know what's interesting about this it's very like it's not an ergonomic design you know it doesn't have a flex or a flow nothing's rounded it's really a shape going through a shape like it's a shape passing through a plane um and yet it's very comfortable and, and you know they're they were smart in building their own sort of articulating lugs mm -hmm. because that kind of well that kind of acts like this it kind of does do the day between thing in the end just in a different way you know and it's, it's like it, it at that size it doesn't need the, no the, like, articulating things yeah. so um but i i was surprised i thought the the mono pusher was gonna was gonna go faster but i think the so the, the pusher for it is built is comes it comes out of the crown yeah and it looks to protrude a considerable amount yeah it <laughs> looks i mean it's not a small crown it's probably already four or so millimeters deep so that would probably add another four or five so it's a it's a long crown yeah. it almost wanted you almost want it on the other side or something. Yeah. Um, and to be clear, when I mentioned Max Booster earlier, I, I, <laughs> I, I meant that, uh, not to get back into the Vienna Halter thing, but... Uh, Should we talk about the Mad Watch? I, I meant that <laughs> Elaine Silverstein has done uh, a collab with MBNF. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. I mean, there's... Which you should look, you know, it's actually interesting to look at that in comparison to this, and you will see kind of how you the, the shapes and forms. Yeah. 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 Well, and, yeah. And that's a very cool watch, too. Um, if you if you dig the aesthetic, you, you'll, you'll love these. Um, if not, <laughs> you probably won't. Not, it's not for <laughs> and you. That's okay. You know, they're sold out. They're gone. <laughs> they're sold out. So it's tough. Yeah. Um, Zach, Zam, what did you think of these? Uh, I think they're really cool. I, uh, I'm, I'm a big uh, Silverstein fan. I've admired uh, his work for a long time. I really enjoy the aesthetic, kind of like similar to Zach. If, uh, I, I, I've enjoyed it without owning it uh, for a long time. I really thought um, long and hard about buying one of these watches when they went on sale. And like, even when, you know, like I, it was obvious that like the numbers were dwindling down. I was like really considering pulling the trigger um, at various times on, you know, any one of the three that were um, available and ultimately decided not to just because I, you know, th there's something else, you know, down the line potentially that I, I you know, want to buy. And, um, but it's just a, such a cool watch, such an interesting design. Um, I I love what Louis Erard is doing, collaborating with different uh, different watchmakers. I'm a big fan of that that trend. Um, looking forward to seeing this when I'm down in the city next. Zach, I definitely yeah. want to want to try this one on. Um, this is a really cool, unique uh, unique design. We need more of that, I think, in uh, you know contemporary watchmaking for sure. Also, if I ever, if I said Silverstein at all, I, you know, that's very amateur. It's obviously Silverstein. I've just known many Silversteins <laughs> in my life, and that's the first one that comes out. <laughs> of my um, yeah. Not to mention Shell Silverstein. Yeah, great. Uh, no, it's it's a cool watch. Congratulations on picking that up. Thanks, um, Thanks. Zach. Have you added any watches to your collection since? Uh... 
in the last no year. i'm in a yeah no i'm in a, like a very good uh, it's been a while since i bought a watch it's been like over a year i think since i besides the 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 worn and wound watch the zodiac um mm -hmm. Uh, watch that I picked up. It's been a while since I've um, since I've added anything to the collection. I'm uh, taking a trying to take a more thoughtful approach to 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 what I what I pick up. Good for you, man. I, I envy that. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I it's hard. I sold a yeah. Speedmaster the day I bought this just to confirm. Yeah, you did. And, yeah. You know, and I was just like, I got, I yeah. can't, I can't play this game where I'm like, maybe I'll sell it when I keep it, and then I end up keeping both. I was like, <laughs> no, I did it. I pulled the trigger. I spent too much money. I was selling a watch. That's it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's good. I, uh, I haven't sold a watch in a long time either. I, yeah. I, I just gave my brother a watch actually though. Uh, I had two U50s, and oh, uh, you gave it to him, and I gave it to my. I have, I gave one of them to him because uh, he, uh, I saw him over the Fourth of July weekend, and he really liked the dial, the U50. I had um, the the steel tegumented bezel up mm -hmm. there, and. And I said, well, I have another one with the black <laughs> bezel. Just happened. To um, so I sent that to him because he had had been wearing this Loom Tech. Oh, boy, the exact. Name. It's one of the old kind of tungsten models. It's 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 fairly it's large. M something. M79, something, something like, like that, this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's it's pretty large. The lug span is like twenty four millimeters, mm. and it's mm. it's a lot of watch, right? And and he doesn't have super thick uh, wrists. His wrists are about the same size as mine. So so I think he was looking for something a little smaller, and he took to the U fifty. So uh, so I sent that off his way, um, which is great. Uh, I hope he's enjoying it. The U fifty is a nice watch. Um, I have. I, well, I bought a watch this morning. I guess we'll we'll, we'll talk about that later. But uh, but the the the. Well, I have this open spot in my watch box now. So yeah, no, you got to fill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotta it fill can't it. be. Gotta no, fill no, 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 don't don't. I don't take that approach. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, but the last the, the 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 only watch I think I bought um, since we did this last was the uh, that night stage three. Oh yeah, uh, which which came in. Um, which is, I don't know why I have like any rational love for these things. I just, I, I love the groupies uh, and I love the nice stages in particular. I have the the nice stage two and then the, the three. They're great together. The mm. threes dial, it's all right. We, we, we don't know if we delve back into the color thing again, but okay. uh, what, what would you call the color? Well, so it's always been a thing with the colors on those watches because they're like, you know, they're through these like eighties. Blade Runner kind of you know feel so it's like it's red but it's like neon red so it's pink so it doesn't read as like <laughs> yeah. oh that's red right yeah. which which I really like uh, I I like how it reads as as like pastel pinkish a little bit uh, I feel like it's like a an inner glow kind of a red. yeah it's really hard to describe yeah, yeah. Um, but it's 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 a really cool watch and. Um, and, and I'm I'm quite happy. And I, those things are just really comfortable to wear. Um, I like wearing oh, yeah. the I like wearing the groupies a lot. Um, I don't know if there's any of those left. Uh, I think I saw he posted in Instagram today. Well, by the time this goes off, they'll probably be gone. I think the last batch of them just went live on Houdinki because okay. I think they're all gone on our site. Yeah, we had sold through them on the window watch up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so congrats if you picked one of those up. Um, yeah. So I guess we've all. We've, Zach, you said you're saving for something. Are you saving for something? Anything in particular? No, nothing in particular. Okay. Just, um, yeah, no, just like I'm in accumulation phase. I just want to. I want to be able to have, uh, you know, when I'm ready to pull the trigger, I want to be able to have have options. And um, I'm enjoying the watches I, I have now. I've been. I, I kind of alternate between my uh, my Grand Seiko and my uh, and my Pelagos, uh, like wearing each of those for like, you know, five or six days at a time, which is like. A long time for me to like to you know to wear a watch uninterrupted and i'm kind of just enjoying like going back and forth it's a pretty good duo uh, and it pretty much covers all your bases yeah. yeah i mean my bases involve you know sitting at my desk and writing worn and wound articles and sitting on your couch watching going movies. to the burrito place down the street and, <laughs> and picking up a you know quesadilla or some tacos or something and yeah. uh, it's definitely a pelagos this, this yeah, Pelagos yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that, that's the that's that's the that's uh yeah I put up put on the Pelagos when I go get Mexican food for, yeah. for sure and uh yeah no I mean I, I I've kind of come to I, I've we've talked about this on the podcast before but I'm definitely uh something I've, I've learned over the course of my collecting is that I don't want a large collection I don't want like a um I don't want to fill the watch box it stresses me out <laughs> to, to have like you know a lot of watches that I'm potentially not wearing so um so yeah, I'm kind of just you know uh, enjoying 
uh, you know, having like a smaller rotation right now. And then the next watch I get, um, I, I want to be a watch that, um, you know, I won't be tempted to sell at some point down the road. It won't be like a, you know, like a, a chip for funding, like something else that's like yet to come. Like a, it'll be a watch that I'll, I'll keep for, you know, for a really long time. Mm. You know, he's going to drop something dramatic on us one of these. Waiting for it. Waiting for oh, it. Oh, by the way, I, dropped, I uh, bought uh, <laughs> something special. Yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's great. Um, Zach, I'm uh, envious of you, but I also like, I like having a lot of like i like having a lot of options <laughs> uh you know for me it's it's fun and i guess uh i like uh, that you have a lot of options too because then when i come to the office yeah, you can like wear, there's yeah. a lot there's a lot of new stuff to yeah, stuff yeah. to try yeah so. you, you've got one of my watches with you right now don't i you? do yeah. yeah yeah okay we'll, we'll talk yeah. about that on a on a later one too um that's exciting um and, and we'll see you next actually tomorrow as this goes live um should we break here and we can talk a little bit about the sh the, the pop-up shop yeah, that's so happening well, I guess it starts in a couple of days. Yeah, it'll be two days after the airing of this, so the 23rd. Yeah, so if you're in New in and around, or around New York, uh, Zach Sand will be down. Uh, I'll be out this weekend at, um, what, what's the, Nolita? It's, well, I don't know. So it's, where, 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 it's 347 Broom Street. Okay. <laughs> um, that's yeah. on the cusp of a bunch of things. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> I guess Nolita, but I don't even know. Uh, yeah, what so, do you think? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's like Soho. I thought it was Soho. Soho? Is it over? Also... It's like kind of over west, it's right off the Bowery. Oh wait, you're right. You might you know? be. Yeah, actually, no. Take that. I back. honestly, yeah. no, I grew up here. Yeah. I have no idea. What it's it's that area. It's <laughs> yeah. like just off Bowery. It's like the Soho Hotel is on the block, so yeah. that makes it definitely feel like Soho. But I don't even know. It's, anyway, a, it's a cool area. area I feel like it's a little further north, though. Either way, <laughs> three four seven <laughs> Broom Street. That's three, four, where seven Broom. the wind up watch up summer pop up will be happening for ten days, starting on July twenty third, and it's going to be awesome. And this is not a replacement for the wind up watch fair. No, no, this is an entirely different event. It is not meant. Uh, if anything, it's complementary to it. But this is really based around the the shop itself, the wind up watch shop. So it's really about the the brands that are in that in our shop and our other products. Uh, we do. We are doing it in partnership with a few brands. So we have uh, Seiko is a partner in there. Uh, G-Shock is a partner, Zodiac and Oris. Um, so there will be a little bit more, you know, emphasis on them because they are sponsoring essentially. Um, but other than that, you know, come by to check out the watches and the brands that we normally have in the store. Yeah, there's going to be some cool watches, yeah. uh, all the usual accessories and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I'll be hanging out over the weekends. Uh, Zach will be hanging out uh, over yep. the weekends. So yep. if you want to come and just chat watches or we'll fight with us about the Mario Tag Heuer, <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> and then go get beers after. If you have a Mario Tag Heuer, please bring it. Bring it by. Then, we'll yeah, it'd be, be, be <laughs> fun to see. Yeah. We'll I'm going to try to make it out. for it too. What's up? I'm going to try to make it out to see it. Josh is going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, let us know when you come by. Yeah. And we have some events. And, you know, I think... Um, I don't want to mess up the general hours, so please just go to no. uh, the, the 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 site to check out the the hours. But you know, we'll, it'll be open Monday through Sunday. Um, you know, I think seven p.m. and to eight p.m. depending on the day. Like as the weekends, it'll be open till eight p.m. Yeah. Um, and we have some events. So at the time this airs, you know, I think check it out because there'll still be like an Oris event and a Zodiac event that you might you know want to check out. Um, yeah, there'll be it's gonna be really cool. And yeah, yeah like, there's like. It's a little chilly, chill area. So, like, if we're a chill area, and if it's hot, yeah. hopefully it's chilly. Um, so yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be good. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bring some fun watches out. If you got some watches you want to bring out, I think we'll do maybe try and do like a kind of a little collector meet up there too. Um, so keep an eye on the site for details on that. Um, all right, so jumping back in, um, another watch that I wanted to talk about was um, so so the only watch is happening this year that happens every other year, uh, and the collection this year was just revealed uh, a few weeks back. And I think the the biggest surprise to see on there was uh, a brand that we talk about quite a bit mm -hmm. around here, Baltic. Yeah, is, is in the mix there, and they made a lovely watch uh, for Only Watch. Uh, of course, it's called Only Watch, and uh, it's a single example of a watch that is built and then donated to this auction, um, and all the the proceeds go to the uh, benefit of uh, muscular dystrophy. Um, so, so it's a good cause. It happens in Monaco and they, these watches bring usually huge, huge money. You know, Patek usually pulls out all the stops and makes mm -hmm. them crazy. This year, I think they made a desk clock. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, but some of these things go for like millions of dollars. Um, and, uh, I mean, all the, some world-class brands in there. So, and, and Baltic is, yeah. is in there. Not that they're not a world-class brand. Not that they're not a world-class yeah. brand at all. And, and I love seeing a brand of 
like this yeah. being represented in this. It's the group. first time we've seen, you know, uh, I mean, a brand that's like a mainstay on Born and Wound really be featured there because it is typically high luxury or very high end independence, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this watch feels every bit the part. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, too. Zach, you wrote about it. Maybe uh, describe it a little bit for us. Yeah, so it's a um, it's a mono pusher chronograph um, that has a uh, the a beautiful black dial of gilt accents, um, and it has a, a smaller uh, case size than it's typical for uh, for Baltic. So it's really uh, you know like they do you know vintage inspired watches just kind of like as a general rule, and this is like really taking that to um, you know to the next logical step with a you know slightly smaller case and this uh, you know sort of like romantic old fashioned complication. Of the, um, uh, you know, with a, with a mono pusher chronograph, but um, yeah, no, it's a beautiful watch. Uh, really excited to see Baltic as part of the um, the only watch um, uh, only watch auction. That um, I love only watch. I always look forward to the to seeing all the you know the watches drop and then and they like they literally set records like every year. Like there's mm -hmm. a you know, there's a new like you know record setter for um, you know like most expensive Patek or most expensive watch sold at auction. Like it seems like there's always like a new story that comes out of that auction and mm -hmm. it's for a good cause and. Um, just a just a lot of really cool unique stuff so uh, very cool to see um you know a brand that means so much to to our readers and to us um you know this part of that yeah you know what i like the baltic is that it it it's its own thing right like it mm -hmm. looks like a from scratch watch uh i know it's easy to i shouldn't say that it's probably not easy <laughs> um but you know one way to think about it and i think one way some brands think about it is kind of reskinning an existing watch or making a yeah, new colorway sure. or something like this of an yeah. existing watch uh you know this baltic is like it doesn't look like any other existing baltic uh no that no, i'm aware no. of at least uh so it's no, its, its own thing uh another brand that does this that i love um that they do it is uh, fp jorn mm -hmm. like he just makes something completely unique for only watch that just doesn't really exist yeah. and this year he i don't know how to describe what he did this year with with the uh, the francis ford coppola watch that has like yeah a, like a glaive on it, like a glove. Thing yeah, it looks like the Thanos a, glove. The it's Thanos, kind of, yeah. It's like a, yeah, it's, like a, yeah, yeah. it's, a, um, it's, it's so a, it's weird. an automaton. It's a, it's a, it's like an integrated automaton with so, yeah. the, fingers the, that the move. The fingers come up in the, but it can never flip you off. It, no, it doesn't. It, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending yeah. on how you look at it, it, it does not flip you the bird. But, but the uh, fingers like automatically like an out. Easter egg for it. Like you said, it's a certain time, pull the crown out. Like it yeah. you off. <laughs> it's coming. I wouldn't. I mean, I feel like for, I've heard friends that uh, Fujorn has a uh, has a bit of a sense of humor to him, and I, yep. I mean, Coppola made Jack, as you pointed out, in your <laughs> so yes, he does yeah. That's a whole other podcast yeah. subject for another day. <laughs> yeah, when are we doing the Jack podcast? Yeah. That, that's, what I, that's what I can't wait Recasting for. Recasting the watches of Jack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, uh, but anyways, I, I like that they make a watch that's just totally off the... Yeah. It's just something to completely unique and different, um, which I love. And, and Baltic took the same route, so huge congrats yeah. to Etienne also, and everyone over there. Like about the Baltic, you know, and uh, I think this is something that a lot of many smaller brands that especially operate in kind of a you know sub one thousand dollar price point ask themselves is like could we jump up could we do something that costs more would people buy it and like you know not saying baltic switch gears or anything but like like etienne you know we're buddies i'll, I'll use your first name like if you made 50 of those or something in that vein a year i you would sell them you know i think you're yeah. you you may like the point is you make gorgeous watches you mm -hmm. know and like i think now the brand are less associated necessarily with just price points when the brand, when they're able to make you know clever high quality watches at a competitive level with you know larger brands you know mm -hmm. yeah we need to make a push next year yeah. or not next year but uh, I guess it would be I mean it'll be sad I won't be able to buy one <laughs> well yeah I mean it's spent too much money on frivolous <laughs> but it raises their like the profile of these brands yeah no, a, a sure. lot yeah. and, you know but I would love to see Laurier Autodrome Home Farah hey. All jump into the pool, make yeah, an only absolutely. watch, you know. Yeah. Um, show us what you got uh, when you pull out all the stops. So, um, so yeah. Again, congrats to to Baltic on the inclusion there. What we'll, uh, we'll be really curious to see what that goes for. I'm guessing it will set a record for a Baltic for a Baltic. watch. Um, the previous might have gone to a uh, Warner Wound LE. Yeah. The salmon mm -hmm. dials. Those those still. I'm, I'm always amazed by what those sell for. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, Zach. Is there any other watches you want to talk about? Um, yeah, so a watch that I wrote about uh, at the beginning of July that I uh, wanted to talk about is the uh, the Delft Watchworks Oostport watch. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a um, a, a small, uh, relatively new 
um, micro brand uh, based in uh, based in the Netherlands, um, uh, the city of Delft uh, specifically, and um, it's just a really cool, uh, you know, kind of like modern design. Um, it has uh, the the gentleman behind Holfenrich's watches behind it, and it definitely has a little bit of the flavor of of his uh, much more expensive watch with, uh, you know, kind of like a unique lug design and like a sculpted case. And um, it's just a really cool watch um, that is uh, definitely like at its price point, I think it's kind of uncommon to see a watch designed from scratch like this, uh, like every component, um, you know, every detail, the dial and the, the shape of the case. Um, and I, I happen to think it really comes together very nicely. Um, they have a, uh, like a translucent dial option, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, the dials all have this like kind of three layer, uh, design, uh, which I, which I find really appealing and, um, it's under a thousand dollars and, um, you know, these guys are kind of like new to the, to the watch scene so i'd encourage you to check out the article which we'll uh link to in the show notes and uh, and give them a look and think that they think they're doing something pretty uh pretty unique uh right now yes they are mm-hmm. i i these are really beautiful watches i would love to get one uh in in for review um i would love to go hands-on with one of these the yeah. dial is is it's it's it's, it's a kind of a, a restrained yet unique um yeah that's fair. and the the blue dial i, I don't know it's I really like these watches a lot. I like what they're doing there um, quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, very cool. Um, so, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, no, I really like them. I, you know, fan of the the other brand. I'm gonna mess up their main, the whole whole thing. Oh, the whole you, yeah. you know that, and I I like that uh, the same gentleman behind that brand is now also working on a brand that's even more accessible. Not that that other brand was that unaccessible, but it was you know they're at a. I think they're really trying to kind of push their their own envelope on their finishing techniques and things like that so they kind of like the cost is sort of where it ends up and they just make the watches they want whereas now they're focusing on something more accessible which is always good and yeah i mean it's just it's a nice watch at a good price point from an interesting brand i mean Mm -hmm. what is there not to like almost can we just talk about how the the netherlands is just like a hotbed for watchmakers these days there's always yeah there's been a lot there and also like, a lot yeah. of media out of there i mean yeah there are yeah our Fratello friends and uh, yeah fratello monochrome um yeah frank rj um uh yeah the dmh that fred dingamis uh mm-hmm. the brothers gronfeld of course okay. uh yeah they, well, i don't know what what's maybe something out? in the water over there yeah <laughs> <laughs> um uh, is, uh is there any other watches you wanted to talk about zach i i think it would be remiss not to touch on the Yet another Black Bay that we would not have predicted. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, should I just jump into it? I didn't write about it, but I did have a chance to see it in, in the metal. Yeah, we um, yeah we took a little trip over to the Rolex building. Yeah, it was like our first outing. First outing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the Black Bay, the Black Bay Fifty Eight Bronze Boutique Edition. So, and with that, everyone in the U.S. is like, "What's a, is the Tudor Boutique?" And there currently is no Tudor Boutique in the U.S. I noticed but, you was the word currently there. Yeah, well, you know, there have been strong, <laughs> strong suggestions that that might not be the case for long. But yeah. we have, I mean, genuinely have no actual knowledge of that. There's just, there's, there's a, you know, at some point this watch will be kind of a thing. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You're not going to have to wait too long, but we don't know when or where or whatever, anything like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but yeah, what was cool about this, so, you know, the bronze, the Black Bay bronze, the original ones were larger. They were 43 millimeters. Um, I believe they were always really popular, like just anecdotally talking to retailers. Like it was one of the, the Black Bay's pre-58 that like they never could keep in stock. Um, never came on a bracelet. And while it was attractive, particularly because it had a 369 dial, which was kind of, which was always very unexpected, but I feel like because it was in a larger case and it was bronze, sort of didn't quite get the, like, I don't know, it just felt different. Like, it didn't quite get that story of, like, oh, this is a Explorer dial sub. But now they bring it down to the 58 case, and it's a really compelling watch. I don't know. And, you know, I, I, whatever, I feel like there's grumbling once again Tudor didn't give you the thing you wanted but like you're if you see this watch in the metal you're gonna like it i really really liked it yeah, like, yeah it's, it's cool and i have plenty to grumble about because i'm not yeah. a huge bronze guy and i'm not a huge I'm not fan a huge of bronze brown. guy either um but i like this watch a lot yeah. and in this dial in this case it, like really has me excited I, and if it was a steel um case and bracelet and like a just a black dial yeah. with the three sets and this would have been instant buy uh, yeah. for me um, i still like i 
whenever that boutique opens, <laughs> you know, whenever, like, I'm, I would consider this watch just because, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to get, my, like, the, I, I'm not allergic to bronze, but, like, my skin does turn green from bronze. I've probably said that before. So I do not know what this will do. It is not CUS N8 bronze, though. It is an aluminum-based bronze. Mm. So I don't know if that has a different effect. Yeah, um, I think very we, cool, though. we have one that, that we'll be reviewing um, uh, shortly, uh, but we, we'll, we'll stick another strap on it, at least see what it looks like for a little bit. Mm. Um, I, I have a suspicion that this will look very good on... A, a plethora of different straps, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see Tudor do this, and I, they, they, a lot of their releases this year have been kind of, whoa, they did what? <laughs> and uh, this, this, this feels right uh, to me. Uh, mm -hmm. I did not expect the style in this case, so I, I really love seeing that, and I hope they continue uh, down that route. Um, Zach, did, did you have any thoughts on this watch? Yeah, no, I think it's a cool looking watch like you, Blake. I'm not really uh, that into bronze, like as a material for um, for for watches. Um, but the the dial's beautiful. Uh, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the three six nine layout. Um, that's uh, I think that's a a characteristic specifically of their bronze watches, which previous to this have been I think 43 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm, so yeah. um, so it's cool that, uh, that you can get that look in a smaller size, and um, it's also kind of cool I think uh, that it's you know it's not a limited edition, but it's kind of like limited availability, and that it's boutique only. Um, so it kind of makes them a little bit more special. But um, this is probably my favorite of the like recent Tudor releases, yeah. I'd say, which I wouldn't have expected to say about a, a bronze Black Bay 58, but I, I think it's really because of the dial. Like they, mm -hmm. they nailed the dial. It looks great. Yeah. And, and for the record, they do in the larger case ones, they did uh, come out with different uh, dial colors and bezel colors. Uh, I think there was, was a, there was a blue one it's the and Bucher, then there was right? a, the, the Bucher blue. Yep. Uh, Oh yeah, we we read yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you um, might have actually. I think I did. Yeah, and then uh, they did the the uh, like a slate colorway yeah. as well. Yeah, which, it's like fumé, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, which would look, uh, I think, yeah. really beautiful. And on this, this, there might have been another special edition with a green, for a different. I don't know. They did a lot of variations yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, the other thing that was cool about the the fifty eight though is that they made the rivet bracelet in bronze, which you know the silver, like, the to me the bracelet is such a important part of the 58 experience that you know that immediately rules out the silver beyond any other reason like I, if i were to spend the money i'd want to get the bracelet with it so there's no silver bracelet obviously it's precious metal would add a ton of cost the gold i mean at that point who cares that you're spending so much money just eh, make a gold <laughs> bracelet. but yeah but they did it for the bronze it has like a little version of the glide lock thing which i pissed off everyone with steel bracelet but we don't need to get oh, in that's there that's right that was the other <laughs> yeah. big thing with this uh, yeah, which like we little... totally left off that's what everyone was yeah, so I we played with this for a little yeah. bit. It's it's not um, it's not nearly as smooth as the Rolex one, no. but but it still uh, but, works it, but you well. can do it. It yeah. still works fine, and I think it's like eight millimeters of of, of play that you get there. So, yeah, yeah complete uh, completely awesome that yeah. they did this, and and it seems like a no brainer that they would bring it into some yeah. of their other watches. I know they seemed a little apprehensive in some of the reactions. Yeah, in the comments. <laughs> I don't think asking about just, this. They don't seem to be a brand that like revisits the past really, like. But, you know, like, I mean, right, like, so, like, let's say, like, the Pelagos, like, they, when they upgrade, when they changed and added the new movement, it sort of was a new model, like, they changed the dial, and it was, so I feel like if they were to go back, it would have to be some sort of greater revision, mm -hmm. you know, like, that skew is that skew, it's not getting a new bracelet, they'll retire it, maybe they're all going to become master chronometer anyway, and they're going to have that higher, you know, and they're all going to be $1,500 more at some point, mm -hmm. I don't want to speculate on Tudor, because we're always wrong, so. Now that I that's put that the, out there, uh, that's not what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's the Rolex in them, though, right? Like they just kind of like do their own, do their own thing, and don't really like, don't really look back, and yeah. you know, certainly don't like pay much money into like what the public, you know, is is demanding at any yep, any given time. Yep. And that's fine, Tudor. You keep doing your thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Um, all right, is there any other watches that you guys want to talk about? You Just very you? briefly while we we're on bronze, I mean the the, Ham the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical in bronze. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's actually th that works really really well, and it's a matte bronze. So uh, I've only seen it very fresh, and it has like a very nice rose gold kind of look. But like I feel like that's going to get very funky looking because of the matte finish as well, which. I feel like increases the surface. I don't know, but um, it's really it just it just clicks. In that watch, yeah, I, th yeah. I think that's how I opened my article about it. Like this, 
you know, you see it and you're like, oh, surely this has existed for a while. Like, it just yeah. makes sense. It looks right. And, and it, it suits that watch, that shape, that dial really, really well. Yeah. And the, the tone that it is is fantastic. I guess that's the one thing about the, yeah. the, the tutor. Nice. The yeah, tutor is like, super cool. Gold. Yeah. It looks so good. Right? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. 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 Nice job, Hamilton, on, yeah. on that one. And also with that, like, you know, for me, bronze cases, I have the green problem, but I'd almost always wear that on a pass-through strap anyway. Plus, they have a titanium case back, which is what you should do if you have a bronze watch because mm -hmm. you want, you know, you don't necessarily want it to touch the skin. But there would be elevated, too. So mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. probably would never really have contact. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um yeah, I like that watch a lot. Yeah, it's fun. I'm happy that that Hamilton is doing that. Um, I think they've got a few watches uh, too down the line that we're that we'll be keeping an eye on, uh, including one that's an integration to the video game, uh, the Far Cry series. Um, Have you beat it yet? Is it out yet? It's not out. It comes out in October. <laughs> um, I'm trying to to see if we can get a really a review code because the watch is in it and we mm. review watches so. We'll see how far that goes. <laughs> that goes. <laughs> this really turned into a video game podcast at the beginning and end of it. Didn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But the, from Mario to Far Cry, <laughs> the, 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 yeah. <laughs> the new direction of Warner Brothers is uh, yeah. actually just well, half-ass yeah. video game. You know, we, we did. Um, <laughs> we did. Uh, we did the recasting the watches. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, I think that's a theme that we will revisit at some point down the line. Oh yeah. And, and we'll give it some more time to put some more thought into into really selecting some good, some good fits there. Uh, but the video game, I think, is right territory for this as well. Uh, I noticed some watches in video games, including past uh, Far Cry video games, uh, if, you've, if you've played those. And, uh, there's watches in the Cyberpunk game There's mm. you know that are like... Uh, I, I feel like there's, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for us to insert our yeah, own... Insert bulgaries. Uh, yeah. yeah, insert bulgaries into more <laughs> video games. I got some DM so, suggestions also for uh, Al Pacino. In, oh, did you? Uh, in Devil's Advocate, and I'm totally forgetting about some, but you know, the Devil Diver obviously came up. Yeah. Oh, sure, so yeah. Like, yep. Which would be subtle, and which would be nice, subtle, like it would have been subtle play to enthusiasts in the crowd without ever really showing a close up that you know, like, oh, that's got 666 on the dial. Yeah. yeah. One thing uh, that came to my mind after that, after we did that, I mean, I feel like the whole week after good picks were kind of popping into my head here and there, but I can't believe we missed the opportunity to shout out marathon watches for the likes of Arnie and. Tom Cruise in the Mission Impossible movies and Jason Bourne, one of those guys would be wearing a marathon, surely, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, those are issued watches. And like, so yeah. any like soldier in like a modern day Jason setting Bourne, could have very well uh, Ethan had Hunt. That. Yeah. yeah, all of them. They'd be, they'd be rocking a marathon. So yeah. shouts to you, Marathon. We should have included you in that first one. <laughs> it's uh, very, very easy to miss the forest for the trees when like thinking about these things, but uh, oh, man. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, if, if you have any more of those uh, thoughts, like drop us a DM or, uh, or, or slide into our yeah. DMs or whatever you say. Um, or, or, or any one of us. Uh, whatever the kids say. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. whatever awkward thing. Let's... Yeah. Um, yeah, if you've got a good pick for a movie or you've got your perfect selection, let us know. Uh, we'll get back to there one of these days. And I know that we, we'll probably do another movie review podcast uh, at some point in the future. We have a guy that is really anxious to do... Um... Jack, right? Yes, Jack. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the, the, the Bill Murray with the hat on. Oh, um... The Life Aquatic. The Life Aquatic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kyle. He's, he's, Kyle. Yeah. 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 He's dying. He's a big fan of that. He's a big fan of the movie. I haven't seen them in a really long time. So, so. We'll, have to, we'll have to watch that again. If you have thoughts on the watches in the Life Aquatic or watches that you would put in the Life Aquatic, let us know. There's, um, there are, I mean, that's, there's like Vostoks and stuff in there, right? Like, there's some, there's some, so. yeah, it's a good watch movie. movie. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Well, we will poorly recast the watches yeah, in that yeah. movie, maybe a little bit, and maybe talk about uh, uh, the plot. Oh man, now I'm getting all confused <laughs> just thinking about that movie now. Yeah, it's been yeah, a long time since I've seen it. Um, all right. Uh, well, thank you for listening to this episode. Um, catch us uh, again. Catch us at the pop up if you're in New York. And uh, until next time, thank you for listening.